In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Hurricane Burl here in the Atlantic Ocean, officially a hurricane, rapidly intensifying, and likely going to pose at least a threat to the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico. But I think that the Gulf Coast of the United States and the Southeast Coast needs to be on high alert as this hurricane is expected to move into uh, strong hurricane status, likely a Category 3 or 4, and will be moving closer and closer to the United States. So be sure to stay tuned for the, all the information in this video. It's very, very valuable. And now is the time to really know what's going on as there's a lot of time to prepare, obviously. As we look at the satellite imagery, this storm is looking better and better by the minute. The spin is getting so much stronger, as you notice. You don't see it that much in the beginning, and then it really gets going there towards the end, indicative of some pretty intense uh, spin that is really accelerating here. We do see taller clouds indicated by the blacks, whites, and pinks there in the middle. Those are going to be very, very tall clouds, and obviously that's going to help it all to really intensify. Now, before we really dive into things, I am really severely sick actually right now and i was asleep for most of the day today i woke up in time to make you guys a video as i'm just too uh, hyped up about this storm and i you know i saw all the information coming out and i just had to talk about it if this wasn't going on i really don't know if a video would be coming out today but i felt this needed to be talked about of course uh we're gonna dive back into this hurricane in a minute we'll look at the spaghetti models the national hurricane center's forecast some intensity guidance as well but I want to talk about another invest that we have right now, and this one's over the Yucatan Peninsula. We see just a really messy area of taller clouds. No spin to it, obviously, but it's going to be generally trying to move back over the southern gulf here. And I think there's a good chance we could see a tropical storm come out of this one as well and get into our sea name, so our third uh, named storm. And then we have another high risk of development in the main development region behind our Hurricane Bur uh, Burl. So this hyperactive season that I've been calling for for months now is officially underway and it's definitely uh, i would say overperforming to this point nobody could have suspected that june of all months would go this way uh, you don't expect this type of activity until at least august and you guys have probably heard me say that this activity looks very august like i've been hammering that point home and i think that couldn't be more true and especially in a moment like this where we have three uh, potential areas of development uh, including that already developed hurricane burl that is in coming out of the main development region Typically, if we do see a tropical storm or a hurricane this time of year, it would be coming from the Gulf or coming very close to the United States. This one is coming from your classic main develop development region in the middle of the Atlantic, and it's just absolutely insane how warm the waters are out there, and this is a true testament to it. So this invest here, uh, the reason I wanted to mention it is because I think looking at this data, this is the 0Z model run from tonight, it looks like we're, we're getting a consensus that we will move into tropical storm status. Again, this line right here, this dashed green line, is that tropical storm line. And as you can see, almost every model except for one has us crossing into tropical storm status. So it is likely that we're going to get our third named storm here, our sea storm, out of this one. Even if it is expected to rapidly move back down below tropical storm status, it still counts as a named storm on the season. Now, as we take a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, it here across the entire Atlantic Ocean, we see Hurricane Burl, of course. Uh, we already have 70 knot winds or 80 miles per hour. And it's down to a 990 millibar low pressure center. Again, your, your main development region is here between Africa and the Caribbean. And we have two invests here. I guess I keep calling this an invest, but it is a hurricane currently. This is an invest back here, though. We do have a 50% chance of development there from that Yucatan Peninsula system. So even though all models are calling for a tropical storm, the National Hurricane Center has pumped the brakes a little bit and they are only calling for a 50% chance, which is still the flip of a coin. Still a pretty decent shot that we do get a tropical storm out of that one as it moves through into the southern Gulf of Mexico. We do have a 30% chance of development there in the main development region with that second system. But as we cross over into the seven-day outlook, we see things change quite a bit here. We see that this one is expected to move into that southern Gulf area, as I mentioned. Still a 50% chance over the next uh, seven days there. As we take a look at this uh, code red system, again, we had about a 30% chance of development over the next two days. But over the next seven, we do have a 70% chance of development as it kind of follows right in Burl's footsteps. Expected to kind of cross into these Leeward Islands area uh, in the southern Caribbean there. 
Uh, this definitely, again, has a really good chance of development. And oftentimes, when we see a system following another one that has done really well in development, we can expect this one to move into equally favorable waters. And I would say that that leans in the favor of this one having an easy time developing, such as Burl has had. And we might even move into the uh, D storm. So if that one in the southern gulf develops, we could all be all the way to our fourth named storm by the time we close out um, the early portion of July, but hardly moved out of uh, or removed from June. Very interesting stuff. Very hyperactive, as you can see. Three uh, medium to high risk systems, including that already developed hurricane, as I mentioned. Definitely looking very, very active. Here's the cone forecast for Hurricane Burl here. You can see it's expected to remain a hurricane until at least about 2 p.m. tomorrow, moving somewhere between 2 p.m. tomorrow and 2 a.m. on Monday. Uh, that's going to be, uh, let's see, this should be Eastern time here, uh, regardless, um, somewhere around there, no matter what time zone you are. But as you can see, uh, it is expected to uh, turn into a major hurricane as it approaches those very far eastern southern Caribbean islands. We're going to be on high alert for a major hurricane for those areas. Before it moves really into that southern Caribbean area, south of Puerto Rico, south of Dominican Republic and Haiti, maybe making landfall in, Haiti, uh, in Jamaica, coming very close at least, and then moving overall pretty close to the Yucatan Peninsula. Keep in mind that especially at the end of that cone, we can see some dramatic curves to the north or south. So we're going to keep our eye on this for sure. So let's go ahead. I want to talk a little bit more about some model guidance for this system. Uh, this is your European model's chances of hurricane status winds, and it really only has it here uh, just to the west of these islands that it's about to hit. Uh, we get lower and lower chance, but we get an idea of where this uh, this model expects it to track. Something like this would be the consensus right there. So maybe the western gulf especially we're going to want to be on high alert as this system could be uh, moving towards that area. Uh, again, wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of curvature back towards the east a little bit. In which case, we could be on high alert for the eastern seaboard as well. A lot can transpire as this is still about 10 days where it's going to be at the end of this. So uh, a lot of time to go and really we don't know what kind of wind pattern we're going to be in by 10 days from now. As we take a look at our spaghetti model guidance for this system, we see it's a little bit further south than that European model. If I was to draw a little bit of a cone um, around all of this, we get something like this uh, where... There is some question later on where we have this one model moving it over Haiti and trying to take it uh, to the east of Cuba, maybe towards the Bahamas here. But that is definitely an outlier. As you can see, the majority of these models take it straight to the Yucatan Peninsula, where we've already seen a lot of tropical activity so far this hurricane season uh, in there. So some somewhat of a mean uh, average would be something like this with these tracks. So, again, could move north, could move south from that point. Only time will tell, and we are going to track it very, very closely. Here's the intensity guidance on these models. And a majority, a, a large group of these models take us into the strong hurricane status, which is this yellow line here. Uh, so I would say that the, the mean average does take us something like this, at least. Uh, but there is a large group that takes us very close to this Category 4 status, as you can see. Uh, so that is definitely not out of the question um, now, we're currently sitting above Category 1 status. We're expected to rapidly move towards Category 2 and likely 3 here. So we should see our first major hurricane, unfortunately, out of this one. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Again, I am feeling a little bit under the weather, so it might be a little bit of an underwhelming video. But I wanted to update you guys on these potentially very impactful weather systems out there in the Atlantic. And obviously, as we've been talking about the hyperactive hurricane season for so long, I wanted to give you guys an update as things are turning hyperactive, as we've been calling for. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.